Uh, so I talk a lot, so I'm going to write my stuff down. <laughs> or I've already, I've already written it down. Uh, my name is Wayne Groover. Uh, I am a founding member of Abolish Abortion North Carolina. I'm a board member. I'm actually going to cut my talk this morning a little bit short because I want to give Pastor Tim extra time. I feel like what he needs to talk about is important. And uh, so this is uh, rare. Uh, you know, like usually I would joke about him taking extra time, but today I'm going to willingly uh, give... No, no, not at all. Uh, so uh, pastor, uh, he's my pastor. We're neighbors. Uh, just wonderful um, Assembly Redemption Church. So I want to thank Kyle. Um, um, Abundant Hope, man. What a what a blessing this has been. Hope Fellowship. What a blessing. Gates County's really been a blessing to us. So I just want to thank you for that. Um, and um, so. Before I get started, I just want to say Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. <laughs> All authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. He will not lose. He has a plan. And what an honor it is to serve him. I was a junkie. He kicked my door in. <clears throat> saved me. Saved my family. And now he uses me to advance his kingdom in the earth. Um, keep in mind, every single person here, you were born at this exact moment and in, in, at this exact time in, in redemptive history. And um, you were placed here providentially in this time in the greatest atrocity of all mankind, um, the worst of all human miseries and moral evils ever to be entrenched in our world. I want to also second what Kyle said we're going to be saying a lot of hard things about the pro-life movement, and I, and I want to second that many people are unaware of, of exactly what's really going on with pro-life Republicans, pro-life organizations. We are going to make sure you're fully aware of that. But also, I want to let you know, just because you're ignorant about it, this is what the Bible says, but the one who did not know and did what deserved um, a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. So you may have been ignorant. I was ignorant. And I pray this is your beating, this call to repentance today, what you're going to hear today. I pray this is your light beating and that we get off our hands and we stop acting like there's nothing we can do and we stop not knowing what's going on in our, in our assembly in our house, with our politicians, and that we rise up, and we say Jesus Christ is king, that we call this nation to repent. So right now, um, I just, I just want to quickly kind of tell you where we are, uh, and, and, and I'm just going to read it. We're, here to, uh, we're, we're gathered here today to discuss how to end one of the greatest human miseries and moral evils ever to be entrenched in our world. And when I say greatest, I mean one of the greatest one out of four pregnancies in our nation ends in murder. One out of four on our planet ends with the poisoning, crushing, dismembering of a helpless preborn orphan abandoned to the death. Baby murder is also the number one cause of death in our state. 27,000 a year, it dwarfs cancer, it dwarfs heart disease. This is our state. This state belongs to Christ. We're his help me, we're his bride, we're here now. The apostles are dead. The prophets are dead. You're here. I'm here. Um, like, um, like chattel slavery was to the antebellum South, the greatest evil of that age, so abortion is to our age. Every single part of our lives are touched by abortion. Medicine is manufactured and tested with baby murder victims. Food products developed with baby murder victims. Google H-E-K-293 uh, -E flavor enhancer. Google that. Most of us, probably every one of us here, have unwittingly practiced a form of cannibalism. These cell lines that they use in food and medicine, they use kidney cells from preborn babies. They do a partial birth abortion, which means the baby is more developed. They, they birth the baby minus the head. That way they can say the baby's not born. Then while the baby's alive, they extract kidney cells. Then they kill the baby. Then they immortalize these um, kidney cells. I've got eight seconds left. 
um, don't believe me, Google it. Most major corporations, financial institutions, healthcare institutions support or are involved with it. Our taxes fund it. The DNA and atoms of murder victims are flushed into our water systems. We're probably drinking babies. We're inundated with murder. You can't even have a bank account without touching murder. Inundated. It's happening at, free, at freestanding abortion clinics. It's happening in hospitals, IVF clinics. It's even, it's even happening in the pews of our church. Many women will raise their hands to God this Sunday morning and not even know they are flushing a life out of their body. Hormonal birth control and IUDs have a secondary function to make the uterus uninhabitable for, uninhabitable for a baby when a baby is conceived. A lot of you don't know that. And there's actually been tests that show with IUDs, which is basically the same function as hormonal birth control, a lot more conceptions happen than we even know. There's no telling how many of our own kids we've murdered as we raise our hands to God. Think about this. Abortion is a massive national sin. It's normalized, sanitized with medical terms, twisted definitions. It's minimized, deflected with pro-life laws and pro-choice catchphrases. It's also a crime. Not every sin is a crime. A civil crime requires a victim. The victim of this crime is a helpless, weak, voiceless human being. The heinousness of a crime is directly related to the inability of the victim. If you strong arm rob somebody, that's horrible. Strong arm an old lady in a wheelchair, and you're a devil. It doesn't get any weaker. These victims are voiceless and helpless. They have no voice without us. So consider the magnitude and the heinousness of this great sin happening all around us, and I'll ask you this, what does it look like to be a Christian in a culture that mass murders our own children? This is where we are today. Please listen intently and repent with us.